everybody, welcome back. So today's video has been very requested and it's my process on getting rid of, controlling and preventing spider mites. For the longest time, a lot of you know, I've struggled with spider mites. I got to the point where I just felt a little bit helpless. I did a lot of the things, you know, with sprays, trying to get rid of it. And then sometimes they would just get so bad that I'd have to throw them away. I stopped buying alocasias for that reason because it got to the point where it was like, well, if I get spider mites on this plant, I'll probably have to get rid of it. And a lot of these plants are expensive. So um, I'm gonna keep this video pretty short. I'm just gonna share the process. None of it's rocket science. It's all very straightforward. This process is nice because it will also get rid of any other pests that you have on your plant, whether it's like mealybugs or thrips or aphids. It'll get rid of all of that. Now it won't get rid of the pests in the soil, but just like my fungus gnats video with mosquito bits, I found that the process and how I'm treating my plants makes the biggest difference when combating spider mites. So I'm just going to be using it insecticidal soap, but I'll be sharing the process in which I use it, which I've found makes like the biggest difference when it comes to killing these freaking spider mites, man. I do want to make a note that these are just my suggestions based on my trial and error. Um, I always say for people to experiment things on their own, see what works for them. A lot of it depends on your climate and where you live and the types of plants you have. I'm just trying to help out my plant friends and the plant community by sharing, you know, what has worked for me and feel free to leave in the comments below if you have other suggestions of stuff that's worked for you. I've tried beneficial insects, I've tried all sorts of different stuff, and this process is what's worked best for me. So I'm going to jump into the good stuff first, go ahead and share the process that I do, and then I'm going to share some tips for prevention, which I use when I bring my plants home and then after I treat for spider mites. Now if you're new to my channel, welcome. My name is Ashley, and as you can see, I am a crazy plant person and proud, so if that brings a smile to your face, make sure you subscribe so that my episodes will show up in your newsfeed. I'm also on Instagram and absolutely love my plant community. I like this type of insecticidal soap and this brand. It's worked great for me. Um, it's not expensive. I like to get the ready to use kind because anything that can make life more simple, I'm all about it. Now, the other thing you'll want to use are some gloves. Now, I highly recommend if you're going to have a lot of houseplants is to find a way to have some sort of sprayer, whether it's in your shower or in your sink or outside that has a strong spray. Um, it's really really helpful in getting rid of pests and cleaning off leaves. So I have found just spraying the insecticidal soap on the plant does absolutely nothing for me. What I do first is I take my plant outside or to my shower, wherever, where I have the strongest spray and I spray down the leaves of the plant. I spray the backsides, I spray the stem. Then your plant is kind of ready at this point and prepped. Got some of the dust off, you know, whatever's on it. Spider mite webbing is waterproof. Then I take the insecticidal soap and I spray the tops of the leaves and I spray the backs of the leaves. Now, again, just spraying it isn't really gonna do much. I've seen people use all sorts of stuff. I just use my gloved hand and I literally take my time and I just rub it like I'm washing a dish and I just wipe down the leaf, rub 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 the leaf, like I just rub the whole thing. I do that on the tops of the leaves. I do that on the back sides of the leaves, so much so that there's like a thick lather on the leaf. I do it all the way down the stems, any crevices, and then I leave it. So how long you leave it will really depend on the types of leaves your plant has. You could always do an experimental run um, on like a part of the leaf before you do this process. If you have one that has like a velvety leaf, you're not sure if it'll burn the leaf or how long you can leave it for, um, do a little test run. I try to leave the lather on there as long as possible just to really do the work for me. And I'll leave it for maybe 30 minutes to an hour. And then what I do is I take that very strong spray again and I spray it all off, the front, the, the, front, the back, the everything, and I wash my hands off and maybe get a new set of gloves um, for any spider mites that may be on there. Most of them will be dead at this point. The spider mites will lay eggs underneath the webbing. So usually that first run, run will get rid of pretty much everything, but just in case there are some extra eggs, then I repeat the process and I spray it again and I lather up the leaves again. And then for this one, I'll probably just leave it, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And then once it's been sitting there, once it's done what it needs to do, at that point, I'll spray it off again. I have found that this process really works. It's not residual, so it's not going to stay on the plant and continue to prevent anything. It's mainly just killed whatever 
on the whatever's on the plant. Um, so you can use some neem, which is a good preventative for mites, pests, um, and you can spray some neem on the leaves if you want to. You can spray in the soil with neem. Spider mites mainly live on the plant, but you know, these things, they'll like get in the soil. They're pests, they don't have rules, they do whatever they want. Now, if you're having a terrible breakout of spider mites, you may wanna repeat this process in, you know, five days or something like that. But once you have it under control, and this should help you get it under control, fast um, then I would say repeat the process every month month and a half until you're not seeing it anymore and just keep an eye on it and then you know continue up with the process the neem oil and then insecticidal soap should really help I don't do the two rounds of of it i just do the one round this process is nice because it will also get rid of any other pests that you have on your plant whether it's like mealybugs or thrips or aphids it'll get rid of all of that now it won't get rid of the pests in the soil if you spray some neem oil lightly on the top layer of the soil it will help you know break up the reproductive cycle of the spider mites um, and it's also uh, a preventative for other pests however if you are doing this treatment and you're treating pests other than mites you can use some systemic granules. I like to use this brand um, and that's very helpful as well. However, it doesn't really do anything for mites, unfortunately, but the neem oil will help. If you'd rather just change out the soil completely and not do any kind of treatment, you can do that. However, I'd recommend if you have a delicate plant, maybe to hold off on that because you want to limit the amount of shock that your plant is going to be experiencing. However, if you have like a nice sturdy plant, something that's, you know, a little bit tougher than maybe like a fragile begonia or a calathea, you know, go ahead and give a repotting if you want to. Now you'll be doing yourself a huge favor in some simple steps to prevent having the problem moving forward and possibly in the first place. So the first thing I do now when I bring a plant home, I always quarantine and wash the leaves off, but now I actually do a little bit of the process that I just showed you. I take them and I spray the leaves off, usually with the, you know, the strong sprayer, and then I spray a little bit of the insecticidal soap. I rub down the leaves. I usually leave it for at least 15 minutes and then I spray it off again and it's just a really simple process that saves me heartache in the future the other thing I do with my plants is I have them set up so they're not touching each other like it looks like they're touching each other but they're not so it just helps prevent the spread of the spider mites the other thing that I do is if I find a plant with spider mites I thoroughly clean the space where they are. I wipe it down with sanitizers, I vacuum, I move all the other plants from around it, check every single one with a light, and then I keep them quarantined to the ones that are having a problem until they're, you know, until I have the problem under control. And even then I might they might live their life somewhat secluded from from the rest of my plants, maybe in a different area of the, of the house by themselves. I also try to check my plants regularly now. In the past I would do my watering schedule, I just zip through and I wouldn't necessarily necessarily like check my plants for pests but I found just taking the extra 10 minutes to like take my cell phone with a flashlight and I go through and kind of check my plants you know once a month or, or twice a month and I can catch the it's such a simple thing but like making the conscious effort to do that has just made it a lot easier to catch the problem quickly before it gets escalated and it spreads to the rest of my plants um, so that's another thing that I've done that's a little bit different and I just want to say from one plant parent to another that I'm here for you and don't feel bad you know don't be hard on yourself we all are figuring it out we all have to deal with the same stuff nobody has perfect plants um, you know we all go through the same things so um, just know that and with these episodes it's always really helpful if you have any comments or things that have worked for you um, if you leave them in the comments ju not just for me but for other people who are um, trying to figure out the best way to tackle the problem for themselves as well so uh, if you haven't already and you'd like to see future episodes care videos and plant shopping videos and house plant tours that kind of thing make sure you subscribe so my episodes will show up in your news feed and again I'm on Instagram and love my plant community on there as well so maybe give me a follow all right, guys, I hope you have a fabulous rest of the day. You will definitely be seeing me soon. Bye!